Do sales conversations make you feel awkward or pushy? It's time to ditch the outdated salesy strategies. Your guide, Nikki Rausch, will show you how to combine kindness with selling skills to meet your prospects where they are, and in the process, how to up-level your influence and income. Learn how to earn business easily and effortlessly. Here's Nikki. Welcome, and thank you for listening to The Sales Maven Show. I'm your host, Nikki Rausch. Today's episode is a part of the Mastering Excellence series. This comes from my background in neuro-linguistic programming, where we learn that there is a structure to excellence. And once you understand the structure of how somebody is achieving exceptional results in their life or business, you can apply that same structure to get similar results in your life or business. Today's guest is Jessica Osborne. Now, let me tell you a little bit about her. She is an experienced marketing strategist business coach, host of She's the Business podcast, author, and mom of two. She spent 20 years building successful brands for global and local enterprise, then ditched her top executive job for entrepreneurship, founding two online businesses of her own since 2010. She's passionate about changing the rules of work, showing that it's possible to prioritize raising a young family and be highly successful in business working part-time hours. Oh, I love this. Jessica focuses her energy on helping female coaches and service professionals magnetically attract the right clients without complicated campaigns so that they have a fulfilling and wildly profitable business that gives them the freedom-filled life they've always wanted. Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Nikki. That was beautiful. (laughs) I'm so happy to get to have this conversation with you today. The topic that we're going to dig into, because this really is your zone of genius, is how to reach your ideal client. But before we do that, I always like to give the the audience a little bit of reference of how you and I met, um, which wasn't that long ago. I got to be a guest on your podcast. Thank Mm -hmm. you for that. And I was so enamored with you and wanted to bring you on my podcast. So thanks for saying yes. Thank you. No, it was such a great conversation. Um, I think we have so much that we can talk about. And I'm so pleased to be here and chatting with you again. Well, I'm excited to dig into this. Tell us Mm -hmm. a little bit about um, just what's not in the bio. Tell us a little bit about like, what are you doing right now in your business? And um and because you say you started two businesses, but let's let's dig into what they are. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so I started my first business as a bit of a side hustle. You know, as the, the usual story goes, I was in that corporate role. I think I was just feeling so frustrated because I had so much to give. I had so many ideas and, and really wanting to do something bigger and better. And and I thought, wow, I'll start my own thing. And I really wanted to work for myself. But I think, uh, interestingly, as you look back, that business, I always had it as a side hustle. It was Mm. something I was doing on the side. Um, I even didn't tell people about it, which is like (laughs) crazy, right? I didn't tell people. I I mean, a few of my friends and my family knew that I was doing it. But I, it was like this secret business. (laughs) So... Interestingly, though, it still um, ran and was profitable. I had it for about eight years and I sold it in 2018. Um, And in the meantime, I had had that sort of, I've gone, you know, grown my career even more, really got to the top and thought, what is this that I've been working my way up for for 20 years? I'm looking at the CEO who I was reporting into and thinking, is that it? Is this literally what I've, you know, been to university, I've worked for 20 years by this point to get here and I'm not loving it. I'm not loving what I'm seeing. Like, is that my next step? And I just thought that guy is having no time with his kids at all. He's always Mm. working, always away from home. If that is what it is, that next step, I don't even want it. Like I just sort of reached that point where I went, oh, and that really got me to to say, right, I'm doing a business. I'm doing it for real this time. I'm starting a a proper one that I'm actually going to do as a real thing and not as a side to my career. And that was when I dived into this business and and actually it was interesting. I was saying to someone just yesterday, um, I hadn't decided I was going to be a coach then and there when I made that decision to start another business I had actually started to look at all sorts of things what did I love and I was about to start a Pilates studio 
Oh, not, wow. Not being a Pilates teacher, but just knowing that I could run a business. And I was like, yeah. I want Pilates. Why wouldn't I want to do that? <laughs> and um, and then I had that moment in the shower. I think that's where you get all of your amazing thoughts and insights, isn't it? Yeah, I for had sure. I moment in the shower and I was like, all I'm thinking about is marketing. Like I have literally just started maternity leave. I was about to have my second baby. So I wasn't at work and I was just thinking about branding and and like I should write an article on this <laughs> I had all these things going on in my head about you know how you really get the right clients and blah 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 and I thought why don't I do this like clearly it's in my blood it is what I love even though I'm not at work and I've been frustrated at work it wasn't that my job and what I did I didn't like it was just the situation that I didn't like mm-hmm. I was like well why can't I have a successful business and do what I love and have the life that I wanted, have flexibility, be able to be around for my kids. You know, I want to have everything. And I just thought, damn it, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it happen. So that's kind of the background to me. And, you know, obviously that's what I also am really passionate about helping other women do, because I realized once I started and I started sharing a bit of my story, um, there are so many women in exactly the same position or mm-hmm. and with you know less they haven't had as as much luck as I've had um you know that they've had to take on roles in their you know as they started having kids they've had to take on uh demotions sometimes they've had to like they've been made redundant they've been restructured into other roles there's been so like I've hardly heard any people who've had a really great success through that part of their life. And that's when a lot of people have turned to, well, I'll work for myself. I'll start my own business because they're just not getting what they need from the the business world. Um, And this, you know, this was a few years ago now, but I'm not sure how much has changed, to be honest. And yeah. Yeah, so I, I kind of went, you know what, I that's exactly what I'm going to help other women do because there's all these talented women out there who have so many skills, so many, so much experience. And then we're coming into entrepreneurship a little bit broken in terms of confidence because this company that you've been working for has either ripped the mat out from underneath your feet, they've, they haven't had the trust in you to work part-time and to achieve and all of these things. And so there's so many women coming in who just are lacking a bit of confidence, but it's not about confidence. For me, it was like, I'm going to help you to really pull out what your core value is, what that highest value that you can offer. And it's not just about getting a client to get money. This is about Mm -hmm. actually connecting with the right clients who can gain from your amazing skills and talents and zeroing in on that and helping you build a business from it. Because when we narrow in I'm not going to say narrow because I know it always feels like you're cutting everything off when you dive into the heart and where your core value is and then you can display that and show that externally and build a business from that place that's where your real strength is that's where you shine then that is the easiest way to have that profitable business in part-time hours because you don't have to be doing all the things you don't have to be doing the menial stuff that you might have done as an employee Mm -hmm. Um, there's so many things you can do to make money for sure in a business but it's like always well just because you can doesn't mean that that's what you should do let's actually find where your strength is and build it from there because you can actually have that beautiful balance of life and work I love that. I love that. Okay. So we're going to d- dive into, I really want to kind of like dig into this with you about how to reach your ideal client, because I do think that that is something that people consistently say, you know, when I'm working with somebody, it's like, I know I need to learn how to do sales, but I don't even have the right people to talk to yet. So to me, yeah. like they, we all need to figure this out. Like, how do you reach your ideal client? So I'm so excited to dig into this conversation with you. My first question for you is, if I were to stand in for you for a day, so I get to be Jessica for a day, how lucky would I be? And <laughs> I want to know what what are some of the first things that I would have to do and or think when I'm thinking about how to reach my ideal client? Mm-hmm. Amazing. I love this question. And thank you for asking something totally different that I've never heard before. Um, so I guess the first thing is just thinking differently about it. 
when we're thinking, like, how do I reach my ideal client? It puts us into this mentality of I have to go out there and find them. So I'm like mm-hmm. searching the internet. I'm scouring through Facebook groups. There's all of this activity to find the people. The thing is, they are there. They're out there right now. They're walking past you, um, you know, virtually on the, on the internet. They're walking past your website. They are walking past your social media and they're not seeing you. So the thing is that you actually don't need to go out there and find them and dig them up and hunt for them like you would in a, in a treasure hunt or it always comes to mind the kids get these like blocks of um, fake rock and there's like treasures hidden in them as some sort of toy that's been popular recently and you have yeah. to excavate it out. It's like you do not need to do that to find your ideal clients. They will find you. But the thing is that you've got to make yourself findable. So what you would be doing if you were in my shoes for the day is thinking about putting yourself into the shoes of your ideal client. Like, do you really know who they are? Are you, are you specific enough that they would recognize themselves in what you're saying and how you're talking to them? Um, Now I know that this isn't new information and there's a lot of people that talk about that out there, but what I find is most people haven't gone to the depth that is required. Um, you know, we're not talking about, oh, you're a woman of a certain age and blah, 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 the, the general demographic profiling. And even what you see in Facebook, if you do Facebook ads at the moment, that type of thing, you know, you get behavioral things and, you know, there's lots of ways you can target someone down. Start with that because it helps to ring fence a group of the population. But I want you to go even deeper than that and be thinking about, what's going on inside their brain because there might be someone who is the right fit for you ticking a lot of boxes but if they are com- like they've got no desire at all for what you do then they are not your ideal client and so often people are trying to convince someone that they have a convince them that they need to change it then convince them that this is the right solution it's like oh you're making life so hard for yourself why Mm -hmm. not speak to people who already want what it is that you offer they're already there they already understand that they have a problem they already know a bit about what's out there and they're looking for they just don't know how to get there they're stuck on island a they want to get to island b how do you get there they don't know the answer because if they did know they would be there already so mm-hmm. you're the bridge between the islands and all you need to do is to kind of share with them, this is the this is the bridge that you need. <laughs> this is the one that's not going to fall down and break apart. So it can be that simple and it's really about clarity in that. So when you, if you, you know, bring it back to you, what, you know, what are you doing in a day? If you're here in my shoes, you're, you're, First of all, getting really present to what's going on right now. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? How can I talk to them about that? So I'm thinking about what can I say? What can I create? What can I put out there that speaks really clearly to my ideal client? Because there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of noise, right? And what do you pay attention to? You pay attention when something is like, wow, that is for me. So the clearer and more specific that you can get, the more that person who's walking past right now is going to stop and go, oh, that's me. They're talking to me. You know, and it, there's a the reason why a lot of people don't do this is because there's a lot of fear around, well, what if I, what about the other people? If I'm talking to that person, what about the other people? And I, I'm leaving, you know, opportunity out on the table, money on mm-hmm. the table. I'm going to miss out. There's not enough, like there's a lot of this mentality that is comes from within when we start talking about it because anytime you pull out any of those thoughts that you have and examine them, you know, really, are there not enough people? If you get really specific, how many of them do you think there really are? Like examine that thought, ask questions because as soon as you uncover that, you'll probably find actually there's way more than I could ever deal with in my business. It doesn't matter that there's other people around there. And and the thing is, the more specific you're getting with your client, the less competitors, I'm going to say in inverted commas, but the less people out there who are competing with you, because the more specific you get, the less other people uh, have the exact same specificity that you do, right? 
when we're general, if we say, I work with small businesses, well, I can't remember what the stats are in the US, but it is in, it is incredible. I'll get share with you the stats here in Australia where I'm from. So 97% of all businesses registered in Australia are small businesses. And that was a few years ago, it was around four and a half million, which for a, a country that only has 20 odd, 25 million people in it, that's a lot, right? So, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, Really, that's your target market is small business. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> four and a half million businesses. How many do you actually need for your client list? Um, you know, and so when we look at that, I know in the US there's something incredible as well. Like we're talking millions and millions and millions, hundreds of millions of small businesses. So that's not a market, that's not a target at all. Like the the closer in that we start to get within the layers of what type of small business? Are they brick and mortar? Are they retail? Are they online? Do they offer certain, you know, like start dialing in and we're still only in the outer layers there. The more specific you get, then who are they? Who are the people? Who do, what are they about? What are their values? What are, you know, are we going to be a good fit to work together? Then you start to get down to right now, I'm starting to really understand my ideal client. And when you do that, it becomes so much easier to have something to say <laughs> because you know straight away you're like, I've got no end of things I can talk about because I am inside their head all the time and I can think, well, to, I've got so many different things I can talk to them about because I'm understanding what they're thinking and feeling and you can only get that level of understanding once you've got specific enough. I love this. So just jumping back here for the audience, for my for my own learning and also for the audiences too. The one thing when I'm stepping into you is I need to change some mindset stuff and examine and challenge some of my own thoughts around who who it is that I'm targeting or and or um what why I'm thinking that like by by really zeroing in on who who I want to work with, who is my ideal client, that it's not really eliminating so many people that there's not enough people to hire me. Like that isn't really the the case. Mm-hmm. And so getting really clear about getting into the mind of your client and then speaking that way. So once you have a little bit of a sense of who you think that person is, what's the mm-hmm. next step that you take? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. I think it is, well, it feels like not complicated to me, but obviously this is why I need to <laughs> share it, share it, right? Um, when you know who it is, it is then be creating something so that they can engage with you, creating some content. So this is where you might think, where are they hanging out? Where are these people already? Um, you know, there's no point going out into the forest if they don't live in the forest Mm -hmm. so are they on social media if they are what sort of platforms are they on Um, I love to usually you know because we can end up chasing people all over the internet I feel like if you decide well they are on all of the platforms it depends on the person choose what you feel is a great one for you because Mm -hmm. wherever you're most comfortable wherever you're feeling I really like it here, I like to hang out here, you're going to have the better result because you're going to be able to be more you. If you're in a place where you're feeling like, you know, I'm putting some content here because I think my ideal client's here, but I don't love being here, well, we can tell. (laughs) We can tell that you're not loving it, right? Because you're not you're really not speaking from the heart you're not feel you're not natural you're not putting out that energy and there's so much that's subliminal it's not just about what you're saying but there's so much just in the way that you're saying it or in how you're presenting or how you're being that we get these subconscious cues from so I always love to say you know think about you and what you like to do. If you love to talk, then getting on a podcast might be a great option. Um, you know doing some video. Think about what would 
work best for your type of how you like to work. You know, some people want to create videos for a platform like YouTube and other people are like, well, I just want to turn my phone on and just say something in a moment. Well, great. That might be better for Instagram mm -hmm. um, or Facebook. Uh, and it's really about thinking, what do you love? And then what's that good match platform for you? And obviously you want to make sure your ideal client's there because if they're not there at all, there's really no point. But, you know, I think that's an easy enough framework to, to think about mm -hmm. where am I going to be so that they yeah. can find me. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of just what I call simple, uh, you know, thinking about the messaging, the wording that you're using, which I've alluded to already. Once you're specific, you can use that specificity in your language when you're speaking to them. And that helps them to straight away, if they jump onto your website and they're seeing something that's relevant, well, they'll stay and they'll scroll and they'll read a bit more. If they're jumping onto your homepage and they don't see anything that feels relevant to them, then they're straight back off there. So you can figure this out really quickly by looking at your data. I love to dive into the data, you know, check out what's going on on your website in particular. It gives you so many clues. Uh, where are people landing? Where are they finding you? What are the words that they've searched to find your website? And you get all of this inside Google Analytics. Um, and then you can see how long are they staying? And is this a microsecond? Like, Maybe the page hasn't even loaded, so you might have some issues on your website. But if they're staying for a few seconds and leaving, you know, your average visitor length or session length is really low, then that to me is an indication that your messaging, either they're not right for you or you're not specific enough in the messaging. So then you've got to ask yourself those two questions. <laughs> so how are they finding me? You know, have I made it clear so I'm actually getting the right people to get to my website? and then are they seeing something that's relevant for them that's keeping them there to stay? So there's that two-part piece that you can dive into um, to kind of understand what's going on. And you can do that yourself with the data. You can find a lot of insights just by diving in um, and looking at what's actually going on. Okay, so when you're when you're doing these things, here's my next question for you is, so what are your goals when you're thinking about, I want to make sure that I'm speaking right to my ideal client, what kind of goals do you put around that? In what sort of way do you mean goals? <laughs> I'm just wondering of like, how do you, how do you measure whether or not it's, it's working for you? Mm -hmm. Like what are some benchmarks or what are some goals that you set when you decide, okay, this is the platform I'm going to use. This is the yeah. type of content that I'm going to put on that platform. And then I know you're saying like, look at your Google Analytics. Um, I guess I'm just checking to see if I, if there was anything. Yeah, else. no, I love that. That's just to understand how, you know, the answer that you were looking for from me. So there's a number of data points that you would want to have. These are just the high level ones, but if you're tracking these on a regular basis, then you can see, you know, what's going on with your business. Um, so the ultimate one is, are they converting into clients? Because it, that is the number one clue, right? If you're putting out content, if people are liking your content um, or you're getting engagement and things are happening and then not, there's nothing happening in terms of converting to clients, then I'd say, okay, we've got a disconnect here. So either they're not the right people or there's a disconnect between what you're saying and what you're talking about and what you're offering. So when that's where you kind of need to then start diving into the different parts of your strategy and seeing, well, where is the alignment out of place? I've had some beautiful clients who really smart, have a great offer and what they did, they are actually sort of talking to the wrong audience for it. So the audience were interested, but they weren't ready for the offer. And so there was a disconnect between what they're saying, who they're talking to and what they're offering. So even though when they were talking, the people were interested in coming in, the, then what they're presenting to them as the offering wasn't the right fit for that, that, that audience. So that there is a disconnect there. And I think that obviously part of this work that we do is making sure not only that you know who you're attracting, but that you have the right things that you're that you're offering to them because otherwise you're building an audience of fans and not of buyers and then you don't have a business. Right. Um, so that's probably clue number one, you know, and you can then dive in, are they the right fit? 
um, I love to try to connect my marketing strategy so that I'm attracting buyers. So I'm, you know, as opposed to just thinking who are the right people, I'm more also thinking what is it that I want them to buy? Mm. And that means that when I'm talking to them, I'm talking to them with that context of this is someone who's ready for this program. This is someone who, you know, for example, for me, they might be, well, they're already in business. They're already working with clients. They might be mostly referral-based and they don't have control over how they get their clients in. And they might be undercharging. Uh, you know, they, they're often not making what they want to be making and they're just a bit frustrated there. So this is the ideal person to come into my world where my programs help them to, you know, just get that little bit more specific so that we can create that specialization. They can be seen and start to have their own client acquisition channels. So people are finding them. And also that then their, you know, their offerings are of the higher quality where they can be earning more in less time. And so we, we meet their income goals, their lifestyle goals, and they're working with clients that really fulfill them. That to me is like, that's the win, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that that's what I offer. So when I'm talking to my ideal clients, I'm not off talking about all sorts of things I know are going on in their business. I'm talking specifically around with that context in mind. So I'm speaking to them about the fact that they might be relying on referrals, which are wonderful, but what happens when referrals stop coming? What well, you know, you don't have a tap that you can then turn on because you haven't mm -hmm. got anything else. You know, there's no foundation in your business, basically. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff that I'm talking to around that because I'm I'm talking to them about what they're experiencing and the exact people who are the right people to come into my world and into my office. So you know, often as well, they're not doing any marketing. So they might be like, I don't even know yeah. what to do. And, and right. I'm like, it's fine. That, you know, there's so much out there and it's not about doing it all. You know, I want to help you break it down. It might just be there's a two-step um, funnel, you know, the funnel is a word or a journey, whatever you want to call it. But someone comes in as a stranger, they're not just going to be stranger to buy. You know, there's going to be a step in between. What is it? Are we getting them onto a sales call? Are we getting them into your email list? You know, there might be a few steps. Start off with the fastest, shortest one, and then we build it a little bit out from there. But the beautiful thing is that then you don't have to be worrying about all these other things that people are doing. You know, the shiny object, oh, maybe mm -hmm. I should be off doing this over here or, or I need to start a TikTok channel because someone else is having success there. It's like people, they all work. Every single one of those things work. It's not about what one works. It's about what will work best for your business. And yeah. when we know what we're wanting to bring them into, then you can choose the right marketing activities that make sense for that exact person and for the offering that you have, the, the context. Are you ready to up-level your sales game? Well, here is a gift for you. It is the Mastering the Sales Conversation mini training. This training gives you my proven step-by-step -step approach to sales so that you can go from that overwhelmed and intimidated approach that you have to sales to feeling confident and leading a conversation so that you easily guide somebody to hiring you. You can get it right now by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash mastering. This is my gift to you. Go grab it now. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a logistics question just to just to check yes. in with you about this if it's like okay. So I I love what you're talking about here of that it's so important that you understand are you attracting buyers or are you just attracting followers? I always want to attract buyers. And I think there's a lot of um debate about this. And I do have a pretty strong opinion about it. And I'm not saying my opinion's the certainly not the only opinion, but I'm really curious about this from your perspective. Mm -hmm. Of so you've got you've got somebody, you've converted them, right? They've come onto the email list or there's something that has drawn them to you. They've liked something and here they are. Um what is your kind of philosophy around this idea of, and I think you kind of just planted this a little bit with what you said of like, how long do you think you have to warm somebody up before you put an offer in front of them? 
Because this is something I, again, I have a strong opinion about it, but I'd love to hear yeah. your perspective without saying what mine is. So that I'm not tainting the water here. I'm not trying to lead the witness is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's all good. Look, I believe that um, to put an offer in front of them really quickly. So within the first few emails, um, you, you've made it really clear what there is. Uh, there'll be some people who are ready right then and there to take mm -hmm. a step forward. That's great. Other people who aren't ready, that's fine as well. Um, but, you know, if we if we don't put an offer in front of them, if we just welcome them onto the list and, and share content, we can just sort of float out of significance. Um, mm -hmm. and if somebody's not straight away connecting you and who you are with what you offer, then you're just a name or a person. And it's actually interesting you just asked this question because I was writing a note before we jumped on this about what I wanted to talk about in an email out to my list. And it was like, because I got this email this morning from a guy, I've got no clue who he is. So it's just a name. And he's like, tomorrow I'm launching my email community, blah, blah, blah. You're going to get a whole lot of emails from me. And, you know, he's talking about this offer and jump on it. And I'm thinking, I've got no idea who you are. So I scrolled down to the bottom of the email thinking I might see something about a business name, um, a website link, nothing, <laughs> just his name, an unsubscribe link. And I'm like, Dude, I don't know when I opted into your list or what it was from, but or I if no I opted idea into your list, who you are, like, yeah. <laughs> and I just thought, isn't this interesting? So I want to, you know, write an email out to my list and you know make sure that they do know who I am. But you know, I'm pretty sure in my welcome sequence, I do an introduction. I let them know who I am. I also let them know what I offer in those first few emails because. Yeah after they've come onto the list and I've given them what they came for, I want to make sure that they know who I am. So I'm not just a random name popping up in the inbox that then saying, Hey, come and buy this over here. Or, you know, do you want to get coaching with me? And they're thinking, I don't know who you are, lady, go away. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want that to happen because you're never buying something from anyone where you have no, they've got no credibility in your eyes. And yeah. this is a funny thing because people are like, I have credibility. I get people who cold email me or DM me, Every now and then I decide to respond. Most of the time it's delete, delete. But yeah. every now and then I think, oh, this poor person, I need to help them out a little bit. And so I, I respond with something and like, you know, no one's buying something from you when you have no credibility. And this guy's like, I have credibility. I'm like, well, not in my eyes. You don't because exactly. you're a total stranger. I have no idea who you are. Um, and that's why, you know, bringing this back full circle to what we're talking about, why you want to be attracting clients as opposed to going out to find them. So, you know, these people who are doing a, an email to someone's, you know, they've got your email address from somewhere or they're DMing you in the social media, you are a stranger who's knocked on their front door and they have no idea who you are. You walked off the street and you're telling them that you can do something for them. There's zero credibility there. And so attracting them in to your list, obviously they're choosing to do to come onto your list, but we still need to let them know about who you are. You know, let's not assume that they have gone researching you before they've opted into whatever it is that, that you've offered them. They still don't know who you are. And, and we do need to um, let them know. And, and I think for me, it's so important that they can make a connection. Like I always think of them as let's connect the dots for people yep. so that they're attaching something to your name like Nikki Roush she's the sales lady okay I get it she teaches people how to do sales I've connected Nikki's name with sales and it might be a lot more specific than that but that's all you need initially is to have that recognition of I'm thinking I need help with sales who do I go to I want Nikki you know that's the name that's popping into my brain so then I'm going to go and find you and then have a look right is this going to be the right fit for me um, and so many people kind of are missing that, I think, mm -hmm. basic connection. So, I agree 100%. I'm so happy to hear you say, I love your answer and I appreciate it and I agree with it. <laughs> and I find that a lot of times people are like, no, I've got to warm people up for months on end before I sell to them. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're just, you're just causing them to forget who you are. <laughs> Like there's, yeah. you think you're so much more memorable than you are in their mind when they're being bombarded with so many other things. So I love that you're saying, mm. put that offer in front of them pretty quickly and establish that credibility of who you are. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you about this, because again, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly that the idea is you should be attracting your ideal clients, not chasing 
who you think should buy from you. And I think yeah. there's a difference. And so your approach to this, to me, is so refreshing in how most people are trying to figure out like, oh, I've got to spend money on you know, ads, I've got to buy a list and bombard a bunch of people who Please have expressed <laughs> zero. I know I always say that too. I'm like, I actually refuse to work with clients who buy lists. If if you're buying a list, I'm not going to teach you how to sell. Oh, <laughs> like, gosh, I just yeah. won't. Because I, like I don't agree with that. In the 80s. <laughs> yes. Or maybe the 90s. I mean, no, I'll the 90s. Like, yeah. 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 I, I definitely worked for companies and we bought lists and I'd be like, yeah. why are we even doing this? Like, yes. Uh, it, it just does not work. But yeah, you're so right. Yeah. It, and it's like, it's the long, hard way. The thing is that, you know, I understand why people get um, caught into that because someone's like, you know, here's a, a template for a DM or an email, just send it out and eventually someone will buy it. Yes, eventually they will. But the stats that I've read recently are that it's a 1% on average, which means you've got to send 99 to get one that will mm-hmm. respond. <laughs> and, you know, they're not even going to say yes to you. So how much time, like if you value your time as absolutely nothing, go right ahead. You keep on going at that. You will eventually get someone that says yes. But I'm like, for me, time is of so much value. Why Mm -hmm. would I waste my day doing that when it's non-leveraged? And by non-leveraged, I mean, you have to repeat it every single time with every single person. And once that lead is gone and most of the time you're killing it by cold emailing them because they're like, you are delete and block. And block, yeah. (laughs) So you're basically like, you're killing your potential with them straight away by approaching them that way. And and that time is now gone. Like it's yeah. not been, it's not got any value to you because you just can cross that off your list as dead. Whereas when you're doing what we've been talking about, like creating something so people can find you, create, you know, actually I like to think about it like becoming a light so they can see you. Like there's so much going on out there. They're in the dark. They don't know how to get to where they want to go. What if you turn the light on and you're the light they can see? Like, create something so they there is a light there that you're not just vague and blending into the background that that you standing out because you're specifically for them not that you're bold and bright and wearing bright pink <laughs> you know you don't have to be that sort of bold but you just need to be bold in who you're talking to what you're saying so that you are you know you are like a light you can draw them to you you can show them the way Um, and that time is so leveraged because, you know, think about this podcast episode we're doing right now. We're creating it once we're putting in a little little bit of time each, and this episode can be listened to by thousands of people. You know, it might start off with a few and then a few hundred, and then, you know, it it will continue to Mm -hmm. be leveraged time that we then have created it. It's an asset then that that exists. And why would we not want to be doing more of that? Yeah sort of my question. <laughs> yeah, and I I agree. I think that a, a lot of this is it's it's what I call the shotgun approach to sales, which is not I'm not a fan of. And I don't want to have to do something 99 times in hopes that maybe the one out of the 100 is going to get me results. So I love this idea of like be the light that 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 is drawing people to you and that's one of the things about you know when you are in the dark and you have a light like lots of things flock to the light because like we're all trying to get into the light so I love that Mm -hmm. idea thank you so much for sharing I I've found a lot of great stuff in this conversation with you so far I'm wondering before we wrap up like this section of it is there anything that you haven't shared that you feel like you want to make sure that we touch on when you're thinking about reaching your ideal client? Yeah, there was something I just wanted to touch on. We were talking about, um, you know, how soon should we sell and, and people on your email list. And while I did say, you know, off, make sure that you're offering something up front and that, that it's clear, as well to temper that, I have people who have been in my list who've been absorbing my content for, you know, a year or two before mm-hmm. they buy my main program from me. So I am not saying if they don't buy then that it's all dead and you shouldn't nurture. I think it's about both. And yeah. like you said, you know, not waiting 
for months and months and months before you make the offer, um, offer something. But then the people who don't buy, which will be most people, will, you know, they are there to be nurtured. And, you know, it's amazing Sometimes I get surprised. I think somebody's purchased. I look up the the history and I'm like, wow, they have like been in this and in this and in this. You know, there's been quite a few things, um, and you know, now they're ready. And and that's the beauty of it. You know, we can't think it's not working because they're not buying, mm-hmm. or oh, uh, you know, they've been on my list for two months and they haven't bought anything. Well, fine, that may not be the right time for them. Um, and you know, this is about thinking well how can I get more people who are more ready onto my list um as opposed to it's not working and I need to change everything it's like yeah. well you know you you have got a longer tail nurture and it's it's I like to think of it as they're on the, the river and then there are little offshoots coming off all the time so some people will be ready to take that exit sooner than others but you know we just keep on flowing because there, there will be a time where, where they're ready as long as they're the right fit yeah. Thank you so much for commenting on that. I think that's such an important distinction is just because they don't buy on that first offer doesn't mean you shouldn't continue to put offers in front of them and continue to nurture the list. I am always delighted when somebody shows up and they're like, I'm just ready to hire you. I know exactly what I want to do. And I'm like, how do we get connected? And they're like, I've been on your email list for four years. I've been following you for four. And I'm like, great, let's go. I can't wait. I'm delighted yes. that... I finally, you know, gotten to that place with you where you feel ready to work with me because I'm ready. Let's go. I love that. Yeah, exactly. It's so beautiful, isn't it? And I think yeah. that you, you know, when it's working as well, you know, one that was one of your questions is one of the biggest clues to me is that you're having a call with someone and you're just sitting there thinking this person is exactly who I was thinking about. <laughs> they are the exact fit. Yeah. And, you know, and it's an easy step. It's not like, will I work with this person or not? They actually already want to work with you when they're having that call. And it's more a matter of, okay, what are the options? Which one am I choosing as opposed to, you know, am I going to do this or not? So yeah, I think that that's the biggest clue ever is when you, you know, how many of your calls are people who are the right fit? you know, they, they're there, they're ready and they already want to work with you. That shows that it's working. And of course, you're not going to know that from day one, but we're talking about, you know, when you've been in business for a little bit of time and you've built up enough, um, you've been doing some marketing, you've got things out there, you've got people in your world, then you can start to, to really look and ask those questions, but you should be paying attention to that. I agree. Yeah. I I love that you mentioned that too, because I changed this a couple of years in my, a couple of years ago in my business. And I just recently started talking about it, like maybe even in the last six months to my clients. Sometimes I change things in my business. I don't think about sharing them. Like, and it's not until somebody asks me about it that I'm like, oh yeah, I do this this way and here's why. But one of the things I changed is when you get on a call with me, it's called work with Nikki discussion. <laughs> like it's so clear that when we're getting on a call, it's the idea that you're just trying to establish and determine what is the best way for us to work together. Mm. I'm not really ready to get on a call with you if you're still in this place of like, I don't know if I need help with sales or not. It's like when we get on a call, I'm going to say 90% of the time this works, people are already in that mode of like, I'm just trying to decide which VIP program I want or if I'm you know ready for the group coaching program or if I should do private coaching with you. Like, those are almost all of my discussions at this point. Yeah, yeah. And that shows that 100% is working. They know what you do. They know that you have something that is the right fit for them. And it's probably just like, let's have a chat and check mm-hmm. that we, I really like the, you know, it's often like that, the vibe. <laughs> yeah. The things that, that um, you know, they're like, well, I like the vibe that I feel, but am I going to feel the same vibe? And And it's almost just, I think, what do you call it? Like, helping the little voice inside you to be like, okay, yes, this is a good decision. And I just want to talk to the real person and make sure that this is, you know, a good decision. It's yeah. not, they're probably already mostly made it by the time that they're getting on the call with you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing with us. I feel like there's so many golden nuggets and the things that you've shared 
Um, as we wrap up, I always like to ask what I call the little something extra questions. Um, so if you're okay with that, I'm going to just dive into a couple of them and see where we go. Yeah. Um, I, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to share what's something that bring that brings you pleasure and or joy right now. Oh, wow. So many things um, in my life. I, I live near the beach, so I go there a lot or like every day and walk along it and you know there's all little pleasures like that because I just love being by the ocean it's funny because yesterday actually I was walking and um I always have polarized sunglasses and I was looking at the ocean I was like oh my gosh it's my favorite color I've got to take a photo of it even though I've got a zillion (laughs) photos already on my phone but I'm like I have to take a photo and then I took my sunglasses off. I'm like, oh, it's not quite the same because of the glare. <laughs> the color isn't there. I'm like, oh, well, that's a shame. But I was seeing it through my eyes. So I had to kind of take a, a um, visual photo in my brain instead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what it looked like. But, oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, and I think there's one other thing, I guess, in my business wise that I've been loving. Um, I always love my podcast. I think it's so cool. I, I've had a podcast now for two years and um, a weekly episode and I, I really found my thing. Like it's amazing. Once I started it, I thought, why didn't I do this before? I actually really love talking to other people. I love sharing things through talk. It's just, you know, I've, I've always written. I think it was because I grew up in the age where we did writing (laughs) we didn't you know Mm -hmm. I wasn't in the camcorder um generation you know it was or the iPhone generation we had you know it was the camcorders and that wasn't very common or popular to be doing it all the time so yeah it's been surprising for me because I always thought I wasn't a good speaker (laughs) so I've been like oh I actually really like talking (laughs) and um, yeah and then as well I think the thing I've came present to I'm not sure if we talked about it when you came on my podcast but we did an eight month trip around Australia Um, around this time last year we were about to leave Uh, we moved out of our house we put it on Airbnb and we went for eight months on a big caravan trip with the kids around Australia and in that time I'd sort of chosen for the business I would do my one-to-one coaching and I would keep my program business jam which is an online um, program with some group coaching, but I, I dialed down. Um, I didn't do any launches. I didn't do any external workshops. I didn't do um, my group coaching program that I'd sort of been running as a higher level one. I, I closed that down before we left because I thought I just can't commit to all of these things while we're traveling. And I really missed doing the trainings. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. So I sort of like I was doing coaching sessions on Zoom and and the calls, um, but a lot less because I'd shut down so much. And I I actually really missed doing, you know, getting on and and doing these online trainings and coming back. I scheduled one in and I was so excited about it. I was like, wow, I really love doing it. And I get off them and I kind of have such a buzz that lasts for a few hours after I've done one. (laughs) So that was surprising because I didn't know that I loved doing them so much until just recently. I love to discover new things about myself. So this is fun to hear this about you too. Thank you for sharing. So, okay. So with that in mind, what is something exciting going on in your business right now? Well, what is exciting? Um, I am putting my main program business jam uh, as a, it's open anytime because I used to have it where I only open it a couple of times a year and I do a launch and while I will still do trainings for it I've decided you know what there are people who are like I want help right now there's something not working I've got to disconnect they don't want to wait six months (laughs) to get in like they're like I need help now and I thought why am I making it hard for people to work with me and so I decided the change that I'm making is that I'm going to make it open for people to work with me and that's going to be open all the time and I created a a group uh, coaching element of it that basically runs all the time instead of running for 10 weeks and then stopping and then starting again and so I'm just like I'm it's much more flowing for me and I love that it fits into a better lifestyle factor where it doesn't have to be all crazy for a bit and then slow down and then go crazy again I can just keep that going and so part of that is 
now I'm going to do online trainings and more of those, um, you know, one-off workshops and things like that, which I'm excited about. So yeah. planning a one on you know, the magnetic, uh, you know, five keys to your clients on tap. So that one's in the works at the moment and um, a business planning one. I love to do things simply. So it's like your marketing plan on a page. I like to call it one page, <laughs> stick it on your wall know what it is that you're doing so that you can just like really stay focused and not get distracted with all of the the fancy flashy stuff that tends to distract people. <laughs> That's fantastic. And I was going through your website earlier today, um, just looking for a few little things and you have some amazing testimonials on there and you have some really cool offers on there too. So um, my last Thank question you. then is how can the person listening right now connect with you? Yeah, so I love to connect. Um, I am on social media. Um, I tend to hang out on threads actually quite a lot at the moment. So I'm not sure if you're into threading, um, but it's an easy way to have chats. And then if you want a more one-to-one chat, you can obviously jump over to Instagram and um, and connect there. Um, My website, jessicaosborne.com, which I'm sure you've got in the uh, the show notes below, yes. um, yeah. Or yeah, come and come and hang out. Listen to my podcast if you just want to hear me talk. <laughs> but <laughs> if you actually want to have a chat, then come and hang out with me on um, on Instagram. I'm on Facebook as well. You can find me anywhere. <laughs> And I just want to remind the listeners that the podcast is She's the Business Podcast, so you can find that on I think on any of your favorite podcast yes. platforms. Yes. Yeah. yeah thank you. Okay. Yeah. And all of this information will be in the show notes. Jessica, thank you so much for your time and attention and your sharing your expertise with us. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Nikki. This has been lovely. And yeah, thank you for your time too. I appreciate it. Thanks. And for the listener, thank you so much for being here. Hey, connect with Jessica and myself on social media. And what was your biggest takeaway from today's episode? I'm curious to hear. Wishing you continued success in all you're doing and we'll talk soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to Sales Maven. Visit us online at yoursalesmaven.com slash maven for more resources to boost your confidence and skills. Are you ready to increase your confidence in your sales conversations? I have a gift for you that is going to show you exactly how to do that. It is my Closing the Sale ebook. It's all about leveling up your confidence, giving you language to use, how to seamlessly move somebody through the sales process. And you can get it right now by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash maven. Go grab it.